Is the season. Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing about the Holiday Collection, Holiday Fun for the Whole Family by Wizardworks in 1995. Yeah, this is one of those things that was released back then and just combined a whole series of randomness, I don't know, for your computer in terms of desktop toys and games and a bunch of other stuff that Wizardworks had lying around and wanted to put together into a shovelware type package and make a quick buck during the holidays. That is as much of a Christmas tradition as any other when it comes to software publishers. And being that this is still sealed, I don't know if it's actually gonna be worth looking at. Honestly, you never know with these things. It could be amazing. It could be total garbage, but that's what we're here to explore today. All I really know for sure is that it's supposed to work in an IBM PC or compatible, 486 or higher, and four megabytes of RAM, pretty much. SVGA, Windows 3.1 or 95. Sound card, uh, you know, I guess it cost $14.99 wherever it was sold at some point in the past. I don't know if that's the original price or a secondhand price. It kind of looks like a really older sticker. So yeah, sure, 15 bucks seems about right for something like this. And obviously, if you know anything about things that I rather enjoy messing around with, the fact that it comes with a holiday music cassette tape, apparently the London Symphony Orchestra presenting the Nutcracker Suite. Uh, who knows if we'll get a copyright strike for that, but we're gonna roll the dice and see what we can do. And yeah, that is what this video is gonna be. We're gonna play some music. We're gonna make ourselves maybe some labels, print out a nice holiday inspired t-shirt, play the six games that it came with, and of course, check out the icons, screensavers, fonts, and clip art and whatnot that is on the CD. And who knows? I don't know. Maybe there's other things on there too. Wizard Works, they just tossed all sorts of crap on CDs back then. <laughs> it's kind of like an archaeological dig at times. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up and see what it is. <laughs> what the heck? I am already surprised. What is this what kind of packaging? Look at that wedge. Huh? Yeah, it, it still has a bit of a 90s smell too. I gotta say nice plasticky cardboard kind of smell. Uh, anyway, listener's choice, right? This just looks like something you'd find at a checkout line back in the day at Farmore. Look at this 1992. So for one thing, it's a few years older. That makes sense. Be a Metacom is apparently the company that originally did this. Like I said, just looks like something you'd see at a checkout line or hanging around the clearance section of a roses store. All right, here is the expected catalog. Always gonna advertise your other crap. And uh, let's see, a few more pieces of paper than I was expecting. They really went all out with the cheap materials too. Hmm, feels cheap. All right, the... <laughs> You always find these PC novice subscription thingies in these from Wizardworks and Expert Software and whoever else. We're always trying to get people to, to subscribe to this magazine. And we got a little folded up product registration card. The CD itself is just in a sleeve, no jewel case or anything. But hey, at least it's got a nice printed surface on there. Sometimes they look a lot worse than this. And we do have a jewel case manual. Of course, there's no jewel case, but it would fit in one. This is actually a, a bit more substantial than I was expecting in terms of documentation. <laughs> like 95% of the time, there's nothing. You might get a quick start sheet of paper, but this, I mean, that's an actual 17, 19 pages. And the Wizard Works catalog, circa 1995, I'm assuming. Let's see what we got in here. F zone for Fury 3, H zone, D zone. Yeah, they were the ones doing the zone things for so, so very many games. I don't see any mention of S zone. They had a SimCity 2000 add-on pack, Scunny. They had a full boxed release of Dagum Scunny. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all of this. Uh, oh yeah, of course we gotta get to this cassette tape. Uh, we will do that after the software. How about that? For now though, 
We're going to install and peruse the Wizard Works Holiday Collection from 1995 on Windows 95. Let's get to it and see what we got here. Okay, so we've got the LGR Mega Aluminum Monster computer going here with Windows 98. And the CD is inserted and actually already installed, or all that it wants to install anyway. I don't think I copied over everything. So yeah, let's just go ahead and run the Holiday Collection CD. And immediately there, we've got a little rendition of Deck the Halls in MIDI form playing back on the All Real Vortex's wavetable output. Hmm. So, eh, pleasant enough little splash screen, although it's cut off at the bottom there. Can't see quite all of the text, but it says, click on Christmas tree ball to start. Click the balls with boughs of holly. Eh, I'm not quite ready to do so yet because, uh, yeah, I mean, just look at these balls. Cards, labels, Xmas jukebox, games, t-shirt maker, fonts, clip art, and exit. <laughs> uh, there's not nearly as many as I was expecting, considering all of the stuff that was printed on the front of the box and described in the back. So I'm assuming there are some things that aren't uh, in here, like for instance, screensavers. I'm assuming they're just already installed. I didn't actually see if it, it did. <laughs> With the spelling error straight away. Well, that's always a good sign. Andy Kane. Uh, let's see what Andy has for us here. Oh, what was that? Oh, no! Ooh, that is painful to look at. That's way too fast for, or I guess is expecting a much slower computer. And no options. That's great. Uh, well, this is a stellar beginning. Let's see. Bell Saver. <laughs> That's literally just flying windows reskinned. Great. I uh, see this one has options. Why? I'm assuming, uh, yeah, yeah, flying windows. Look, it just literally says it. So that's just probably using the same thing. It's just putting a different shape on there. It's using the same SCR file for windows, probably. Yeah, because here's that. This is flying windows. The same thing. Uh, they're just using the Windows 3.1 version. Let's see here. We got Santa Blast. Oh, no. Another painful one. Let's not look at that. The preview and the settings do the same thing. <laughs> okay, well, what is Savior? Oh, I was expecting little baby Jesuses or something. This is a very Easter screensaver instead. All right, uh, Snowflakes, let me guess. Yep, exactly the same thing. With the same settings. Does Jesus have the same? Yep, same thing. So there's like a bunch of flying windows and a couple that are just... Well, this is awful already. Oh, no. Is the rest going to be like this? <laughs> you never know what you'll find with these. So let's just go ahead and open cards, labels, holiday card and label maker. Uh, let's see here. This is oh, by Lifestyle Software. Well, there's a, a hint of a company other than Wizardworks. Lifestyle Innovative Software at that. Hmm. Innovative. So let's see here. We got. Yeah. Just a preset bunch of things, bunch of Avery labels. Ooh, diskette labels. I'm gonna have to make one of those. Boeder labels, never heard of that. <laughs> Wait, what? Eigen format Zweck form? Starting to get the feeling that this was not made for the American market in mind necessarily, but hey, who knows? Uh, let's make ourselves a diskette label. Uh, yeah, this one. Sure, why not? Okay, yeah, this is definitely not made for the U.S. Look at all these. It's all millimeters. Uh, sure. This interface is annoying me already. That's not good. And there's like this cut off, I'm assuming, for the start menu. Yeah, this is probably made for Windows 3.1, so I'm sure there's going to be some weird bugs. Uh, so we get a picture thing. It's looking for bitmaps. It came with a bunch of clip art. Is that? Yes, it is. <laughs> a bunch of bitmaps that we can't actually see what they are before we uh, do anything with them. That's just great. Let's go with Festive 06. Whoops. Okay, so that's like a background of Holly or whatever. Um, uh, let's do another one. 09. Ooh. And it's more Holly. <laughs> with a non-transparent background, so that... 
renders the last thing moot. There's no undo. You can't even, uh, the bounding box is not visible outside of the canvas or the, the work area. Wizard works, no. All right, let's do whatever this is. Feldbaustein? Okay, let's just do weekday in uh, Comic Sans, big old font. Yeah. <laughs> it literally put just the word weekday. Uh, so we're gonna print this out to the uh, color dot matrix that I have, the star NX 2420 rainbow. Let's go ahead and do it. Alrighty, got the star printer set up and ready to go. And while I don't have any floppy disk labels individually, I did grab some sticker paper that we can just print out whatever we want on there and then cut it out from there after we've printed it. So we'll just go ahead and get that inserted in the paper feed and get that where it should be. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and begin the print. Well, <laughs> this is not quite what I expected. So I was assuming that because it was in those brackets that it would fill it in with just whatever the weekday was, but I wasn't expecting it to be in German. <laughs> it is at least correct though. I mean, it's Sunday as I'm printing this, so uh, there's that. And I also wasn't expecting to see it fill out just all the space where there were graphics in the background that were being cut off by the edges of the canvas on the project itself. You would think that it would crop those off so you would know where to cut, but I guess not. Okay, got a nice pack of Sony floppy disks here. And it comes with its own label, but we're not gonna use that, of course. I'm just gonna use it as a template. Because yeah, without uh, actual bounds here, and it just printed wherever it wanted to, I'm not entirely sure where the label goes, but kind of looks like it generally goes right there. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Suntog. <laughs> there we go. Our brilliantly made German Wizard Works disc that was sold here in America for English speaking customers. Ah, I feel the Christmas spirit. Nice. So that certainly was an experience. Let's see if Xmas Jukebox fares any better. And it's an empty song cue. Okay. Christmas Jukebox is a simple program, you don't say, that allows you to load and play a collection of MIDI music files. Eh, this is just the most basic looking MIDI player I've ever seen. So it came with the one deck the halls we saw or heard at the beginning. And we've got that uh, along with a lot of others. There were supposed to be 10, according to the box. Maybe it meant 10 songs on the cassette tape. I don't know. Okay, it's, it's just gonna play them straight away. <laughs> this is not a good player. What weirdly composed midis, too. Like, just the note selection is odd. Yeah. Well, what are those notes there to use? <laughs> Man, whoever was doing those is just straight up improvising. That is a very confusing selection of MIDI files. You know, I went into this really not knowing what to expect because you never know what to expect when it comes to these kinds of collections. And that is sort of the joy of exploring them back then and now. Uh, sometimes you get something really awesome and sometimes you get this. 
and I can only imagine what we're going to see when we uh, get into the games, so let's do that. Okay. Santa Lander, memory game, Santa safe, Scrooge squirrel, space, tree attack, and North Pole drop zone. Well, there are six games, as it said, so let's see. What is this, like a Lunar Lander or something? Okay, a lot of options. Let's just start on easy, I guess. Hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> yep, it is Lunar Lander, basically. Okay, so you don't get any points for just plopping your sled down. What, are you supposed to make like the smoothest? <laughs> this is really stupid. Let's make it difficult, see what that is. Ooh, there we go. We've got some crazy wind going on. Look at that, the Christmas tree's bent. I can barely do anything. Wow, okay, so that, that, that makes a little more sense. I'll see what memory game is. Oh no. Eh. It's a memory game. Yay. All right, Santa safe. Digging that dithered art. <laughs> For a complete game instruction, see the holiday collection manual. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have it here in case we need it. Oh, what is this? Safe cracking? Uh-huh. Oh, it's Mastermind. All right. So it's the same. You just have this uh, Doom Guy Santa head here looking around. <laughs> this is not a Christmas game. I'll just stick a Santa head in there. It's fine. Okay, let's see what Scrooge Squirrel is. And my goodness, that is some artwork. What have you been smoking, dude? So this is just kaboom, huh? Yep. You're just, you're just catching the things. Cool. All right, so we just got two more left. Uh, space tree attack. What are they ripping off now? Some other Atari game or something. <laughs> Looks like asteroids, yeah. <laughs> oh, but of course it is. Oops, that W warps. I didn't look at the controls. At least the mouse does that. Okay, right. Uh, all right, last one. North Pole drop zone. We got targets, moving ships. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Plop. <laughs> the present just. <laughs> okay, I'm missing something here. I thought I was supposed to just drop the presents on the platforms. Very clearly not. Oh, oh, okay. So you're parachuting them down. Well, that makes this substantially easier. What in the world? I was thinking it'd be like a, well, I mean, like one of those submarine hunt kind of things where you're dropping depth charges, but. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. The shifting wind makes this interesting. So there's a bit of strategy eh, in terms of dropping it and letting it free fall and then parachuting. <laughs> this is by far the most interesting and enjoyable game so far. I could actually see myself farting around with this one on a desktop back in the day, just being like, oh yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Sweet. Well, that's the games out of the way. Uh, it's only downhill from here, I can imagine. So T-shirt maker it is. Let's see what we got going on. Ugh. Welcome to T-shirt maker. Make it, order it. So you can order things from here too. Of course, we're not gonna do that though. We're gonna make our own and print it out. So we got sleep tea. Uh, different t-shirt types, <laughs> the amount of cotton. All right, so, so far, pretty standard stuff. We got a very print shop-esque <laughs> kind of layout and design here. Looks like they straight up ripped it off, like even the buttons and menus and everything. Looks like Print Shop Deluxe. Categories, holidays, 
proud American holiday. Another proud American standing tall on question mark. Sports. What? Can it be cured? Addiction. <laughs> Addiction. Can it be cured? <laughs> Misery. What are these sports things? Ah, oh, these are terrible. World peace. It could happen. Designer label. Ribbit. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> I'm PC. <laughs> oh, oh, these are perfect. I want all of these shirts. So many felonies, so little time. Like, what is this? This whole CD is full of so many confusing things. Oh, it's like the very worst type of T-shirts that you would see at a mall kiosk or something. Like, yeah, look at this. Buds for you. Again, mall kiosk stuff. Like one of those things where they take a picture of you and. Stick it on a t-shirt right then and there. Ears. Blank's got them and we listen. I gotta go with rib bit. That is just amazing. Double click here to select a different image. Double click here to type your own designer name. And ah, rib it's perfect. Oh no, we got graphics. What kind of silliness is gonna be in here? I can only imagine. There's three different types of geese because that's important. I don't like this one, but I don't like really that one. Oh, that one's perfect. That's the perfect goose. Holidays, you got grand total of six graphics for a Christmas compilation thing. One of them's a witch. I mean, I guess it's just general holidays, but yeah, five of them are kind of Christmassy, I guess. World, realistic, realistic. All right, so this is already perfect. Let's just, I don't want it just on like a, a pocket, man. I want this on the whole, whole shirt. So I get nothing on the back, but the front is perfect. So I'm gonna say that's good. I wouldn't change a thing. It does actually look like you could do something with a modem. Yeah, look at this modem setup. I'm guessing maybe you could send some of these just straight up over the internet instead of shipping a physical disc off to the company to print it. And yeah, whatever though, we're just gonna go ahead and print this on a t-shirt transfer and their color dot matrix printer. And I mean, you know, put it on a t-shirt. Let's just do it. All right, so this is something I've actually done on LGR before in another video about this exact printer, actually, but yeah, it's always fun. Just got some standard t-shirt transfers. Just gotta be careful here that it doesn't get too hot because, you know, that's kind of how the transfer starts to come off of the paper. And these dot matrix printer heads do get really warm, so it's actually possible for it to start gunking things up and transfer comes off inside there. Yeah, I'll just pay attention and hope it doesn't happen. And we are ready to print our luxury Ribbit brand name t-shirt. Let's do this. Oh my goodness. It's printing out a picture of the t-shirt. <laughs> It's just supposed to print the image. I thought. Oh man, this is just classic. Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting it to print out the full image of the t-shirt behind our t-shirt design. It really seems, and I was just looking at the software while this was printing, it really seems that it is meant to only send stuff into this company for getting the t-shirts printed off-site and then shipped back to you. Looks like you'd send it off in a floppy disk and then pay over credit card with your phone line. That's what the modem thing was for. And yet there is a print option in the application itself, but there's no option in the application to just print the design in the middle. No, it just prints whatever's on the canvas, including the t-shirt <laughs> background clip art. Yeah, you can see it actually started running out of black ink there, or actually it started scraping up. So maybe I, I don't think I had the head far enough off of the paper. I thought I did, I adjusted it, but.
Actually, gonna give it one more try because, yeah, I don't think I had it set quite right. And I want the full ridiculous printout. So let's get this stupid thing put on a t-shirt. Oh my goodness, this is dumb, I love it. Let that warm up and get a loose cutout of our delightful frog ribbit designer t-shirt. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Yo dog, I heard you like t-shirts. And yes, because the software is ridiculous and didn't actually take into account it being put onto a t-shirt transfer, it is not printed in reverse. I guess I maybe could have done that in the software, but it's too late now. <laughs> okay, just gonna let that cool off. All right, moment of truth. Yeah. Oh yeah, backwards and perfect. Uh-oh, well. Yeah, backwards and slightly flawed. How about that? Yeah, let's see if we can just reheat that one part and get it stuck back on there. Oh no! Well, that, that made it phenomenally worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of, of t-shirts to end 2020 on, uh, that's a pretty suitable one, so I, I'm, I'm gonna wear it with pride. Perfect. And finally, we are left with fonts and clip art, which I believe we've already seen that in the other things, but okay, well, something called Thumbs CD. So there's an external program for viewing the clip art. You can't actually view it from within, like the card and label maker, for instance. Like if you go into import image, you can. But of course, you're not going to be able to actually see any of the things. So I guess you could, you know, you could just uh, like go over here and be like, I want this oddity, FSTV158, and that would be right up here, and you could kind of eh, find it that way. What? You should avoid changing the size of this raster image to avoid jaggies. I'm going to resize it anyway. Can't tell me what to do. Sure. You can look at them in here and then select them that way. Yeah, they did what they could, considering this is made for Windows 3.1, I gather. Uh, it did also come with those fonts. Oh, look at that. So this is cool. So you can get a font preview here. That's pretty handy. We've got a bunch of icons, you know, and some like line art. Yeah, but just looking around and check this out. There is actually another program that is not listed or openable from the menus. Christmas coloring book. And yeah, all those line art things that we were seeing there, they're all in here too. So that's cool. Uh, and, and it opens them in paint. Sure. And last up here, we've got the London Symphony Orchestra Nutcracker Suite. Let's just go ahead and get this weird little package opened up. And of course, I'm not going to be playing the whole tape or anything like that. Just a little bit of it. I'm assuming it's just going to be orchestral Christmassy music, and we don't want to get any content copyright junk plastered onto this video. Yeah, pretty standard cassette tape. You got a track listing on the back, and a little insert inside here that folds out, going over the history of Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. Thanks, Clark McAllister, for the liner notes. And there's also a mention in here that this is just volume one. This really does look like one of those things that you'd find in generic retailers back in the 90s and all the leftovers ended up in these Wizard Works holiday collections. But anyway, let's listen to a little bit of the Nutcracker Suite.
I suppose that is it for this particular video, such as it is. I just love these kind of stupid collections from the 90s, you know? It brings back memories of disappointment and uh, just kind of never knowing what you're gonna get when you buy something for 15, 20 bucks, or even less usually in my case, we just get them whenever they were as cheap as possible. And then just seeing what was on the disc, you know? And in, <laughs> in the case of this Wizard Wars collection, you get a, a card and label maker that translates random things into German and a t-shirt designer that just prints out the entire t-shirt interface along with your design. Not to mention the six not so great games and the questionable MIDI tracks and icons I'll never use and screensavers that are mostly the same thing over and over. And <laughs> of course, a wonderful cassette tape that, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's just one of those 90s relics that is simultaneously wonderful to explore nowadays and is not at all. Actually, it's a completely terrible experience. And that's just what you got for such a cheap product that was just tossed together. Uh, so you should never mess with it. But if you do want to mess with it, uh, I'll put a link to the download for this that I've put up on archive.org. So uh, you can check that out on your retro computer or virtual machine of choice. And yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it for this video. Didn't plan on it, but it kind of came together as an appropriately janky experience to end 2020 on. So I hope that you enjoyed, and if nothing else, I hope that you'll stick around for the next year. Cause yeah, 2021 is approaching. So I hope you had an enjoyable Christmas season and have a happy new year. And as always, thanks for watching.